I'm going to click to start the Turbo Capture session, then hit our Windows menu to start our browser, call up Google Chrome, and hit our bookmark. This will launch Aris Innovator, and I'll have to log in. I click in the Username field and enter my username, which eggplant can vary depending upon what it's testing, then click and enter the password, if I can remember it, and click the Login button. Once Innovator opens, I can see the menu here is open, but we could easily have Eggplant check that first. Click on Design, click on Parts, and then click Create New Part. This will open another screen for us, and I click in the Part Number field and enter a part number. Now your system may be configured to fill this in automatically. I can click in the Name field and enter a part name, but as with usernames, I can have my script determine or pull in data to enter into this field based on which test it's running at that moment. Then I click in the Type field and launch the types. I'll choose Component and click the check mark. Again, your system may be configured or customized to have different items on that screen. Lastly, I'll enter in a long description showing off my amazing typing skills. And then click Save. I'll also, for good measure, click Done just so that I can record them both. We're also interested in this notification that pops up, letting us know that the task was performed successfully. So I'll just click it so I can capture it. Tell Eggplant to capture the session, give it a working name, and rather than being stuck with my clumsy attempts, I now get to rework the session to make it a flexible script that'll be repeatable on different platforms with different screen resolutions or configurations. I tighten the image to make it more recognizable, give it a name, and choose the image recognition algorithm that'll best find this icon regardless of video settings. When clicking on Chrome in my menu, I can switch from using image search to using optical character recognition instead and have Eggplant literally read the screen to find my browser. Capture an image from my bookmark, give it a name, and move on to the next step in the script. Once again, I'll use OCR to pick up the word username and give it the username that I want it to type in. My scripts can make the text that I input here variable for flexible testing. Same with password, and yes, these values can be encrypted to make sure that your passwords are not visible here. And we'll use OCR to find the word login as well. Now, Eggplant is very good at recognizing when we're clicking on text and we can use OCR to click on Design. But we're just capturing the start of a script here. We can always change our snippets between image and OCR search later on, even if we don't get that option during capture. So we'll go and capture these images, knowing that we can easily change it to search for text later. So I'll save an image for my parts icon and give it a name. And also go ahead and capture the Create New icon. Now, I know full well that I'll be able to reuse this image when I want to create many different things throughout the Aris Innovator platform because the Innovator application reuses that icon fairly often. Eggplant lets me capture once and reuse often. Now here, uh, when I click in the Part Number field, I'm clicking in a blank area, and that's certainly not going to be easy for any algorithm to find. So what Eggplant allows me to do is to search for the part number header as an image or with OCR, and I can use this red crosshairs you see to tell Eggplant where to click, in this case, about 10 pixels below the image. This allows us to also target hotspots on images with multiple clickable zones, and yes, even test out CAD. I'll put in the text that I want to fill in for the part number, and as I said, this can be a dynamic variable later on. We'll do the same with the name field. So we're going to search for the header and telling Eggplant that we want to click in the field just below that header. Okay, you can see that I made a few misclicks here, but that's not a problem. We can easily just tell the session to ignore my mistakes and skip that step. Same thing here. I hit the shift key accidentally, and we can replace it with some static text or just remove it later on. There's the text we actually wanted. And now on to launching that type dialog. And here, we're clicking on the ellipsis button. But as you can imagine, there are a lot of those. So I can, once again, look for the header 
and I can either set a relative click location or I can have Eggplant find all of the instances of this icon and use logic to determine which one I want. In this case, I'll probably tell Eggplant to find the first ellipsis button below and to the right of where it found the header. Limiting the search area is a great way to guarantee you find the instance of the image that you want and to speed up searching. Tighten up my image, give it a name, and on we go. I'll quickly and easily leverage OCR to find the word component and capture that check mark button, which I'm sure I will also be able to reuse elsewhere. One more example of capturing a header to enter the long description for the part. So we zoom in on the header, give it a name. Again, later on we can change this to look for OCR, look for the text itself, set it to treat this as text. Here's the static text that we want, we'll save that, and then we go ahead and capture the save button. Focusing in to make sure that it's easy for the algorithm to be able to find, give it a name, and capture the done button. And here's that notification. Now I'll actually go ahead and save this as OCR because rather than searching for the text to click on it, I'll be able to look for the just save successfully portion of it. And Eggplant will actually be able to read this text and extract the item name from that string. So I can actually pull an auto-generated part number from that message and use that later on in searches or other aspects of the test that I want to run. Then I simply click Generate Script. Eggplant creates the final script for me, which I am now free to edit to add validations, logic, looping, dynamic data inputs, and anything else that I want.